Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize this software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener, specifically the file menu. And by talk, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. So the file menu right up here, this is what we'll be going over today and just letting you know what all of these buttons mean. So up at the top, new project, when you wanna open up a new project, you click on this and it'll open up this window that you kind of get whenever you fresh open up the whole program to begin with. So you can pick which type of project you wanna work on and then you'll also choose where to save it. You can also just open up a recent project in here as well if you want to, an existing file. All right, so the open tab, that just, you click this and it brings up those file navigation menus and you can open up an existing project. From here, you can get into recent projects and this is not only things that are saved on your desktop, but also things that are saved. These are saved in like my Dropbox folders right here. That's what that is. So you can open those recent projects from just about anywhere. Next up, favorite projects. Now I don't have anything in my favorites, but if I wanted to, I could, so let's add this one. This is titled Quick Start. That's my name for my kind of example story <laughs> project that I use for these videos. So let me add this. So we'll add this project to my favorites. And now when I come here, favorite projects and Quick Start is on here now. And then if I want to, I can clear it. Yeah, I want to clear it. And then it will be gone from here. So Adding projects to your favorites is easy as just clicking right here. So if there's one particular project that you work on a ton or maybe two or three projects you work on a ton, adding those into your favorites means that you can just boop, 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 open them up real fast. Now show project in Finder. So I've opened up Quick Start, let's say I've had it open for a little while and I have completely forgotten where on my computer I have it saved. That happens to me in embarrassingly large amount. It's fine. So let me click on finding it in Finder. So this is in my backup folder within my, and I mean, I know where this is. So down here in, in my Dropbox, find all projects in spotlight. So I click on that and it opens up another Finder window where all of my Scrivener projects have been brought up. From here, I can close this particular project, but not the Scrivener program in, as a whole. If you hear squeaking in the background, my dog has found her squeaky toy. And the squeaker has been removed, but it's made out of rubber and so it still kind of like squeaks. So um, my apologies. <laughs> so yeah, you can close this project, but leave the Scrivener program itself open. Or if you have multiple projects open, those projects will stay open, but this one will close. Close window will close the currently active window. So like if you have a utility panel open or quick reference or something like that. But if the project window is the only focus, then the whole project will be closed. So this is essentially the same as this, unless you have like one of those little quick reference extra windows up that I have talked about in other videos. Right here, if you don't wanna do Command S, you can just come click save. And then also save as, so if you want to save this as a different name, you click here, save as, and you can change the, the title, go, go away. You can change the title up here and save it as something different. Import, you. this is where you can import stuff from, and we can import files, which is just um, importing files from your computer onto your document. You can only import text-based stuff, so you can't import um, anything that isn't text-based. There's I, there's a list that Scrivener has somewhere on all of like the supported formats, but it's like um, TXT and HTML and I can't, or I guess that's web pages, but I, I can't remember. But there's a whole list of, of different text formats. But I I would assume that the average person is probably only, only dealing with supported things because Scrivener does support quite a lot of stuff. So if, if you have a question about it, you can check out their website or the, um, there's like a instruction manual, but yeah, don't try to import images or non-text-based stuff. <laughs> 
and it'll come in. So importing a web page, you can just, you would type in the URL here and it will archive as an offline format. And so be kind of like a web web archive. If you want to, I, I believe in here, you can also choose to only import the text stuff off of that website and not any of the images, but I can't remember. I don't know why this is grayed out. It's probably just because I'm not selected into something correct in here. So research files as aliases. So rather than fully importing things in, so you, you can import files in like completely up here. Or if you don't want to import the whole thing in, you can research them as aliases. So it will, it, there will be like a link between your original item and then this project. Just so you can have like, if you have like a ton of research, it's not going to take up a, a whole bunch of space within your project and it's not gonna like bog you down. So instead of importing the files completely, you can just link to them here. Plain text formatted screenplay. If you are writing screenplays, you can import like a plain text um, screenplay. And then within this, you can split it if you want to into sections into separate like binder documents over here. So that it's not all just one big huge file. You can separate that screenplay out into different things. This is like um, if you're working with like a different specific screenwriting program. But again, plain text, like text-based files only. I, I don't write screenplays, so I don't know a ton about this, but I am sure that you can find more information on the Scrivener website if there are like file formats that aren't supported. But uh, it's a safe bet to say that if it is text-based, you're probably okay. And importing another Scrivener project. So that is taking a different Scrivener project and importing it into this Scrivener project. So if I wanted to, for example, import one of my like my books into this for some reason, I would do that from here and it would kind of combine them. All of, when you, when you do that, all of the items in the binder are imported and the metadata will be imported as well. Let's say that you were working on your, your book like a year ago and then you made a copy of it and you did all of your work since then in that copy. So you have like the old version and the new version of your book. Then if you try to import one into the other using this, Scrivener will detect that, hey, this one's an older version of, of this new one. Do you want me to just merge it? And you can do that. You can just kind of merge them together, which is a completely separate video that I will be doing because there's a little bit more to, to, to it than that, just to make sure you don't lose any really important stuff, right? My dog's in my office with me and she's being very active. She was lying down a minute ago, but she has just decided to get up and run around. So this one, import and split, you can take a standard file. Let's see if I can. So open this up and then from in here, you can, so the way that I used to, before I started using Scrivener, the way that I used to write my novels, when I separated chapters, sections, etc., out, I would use the little hatch mark, the hashtag, <laughs> the pound sign to separate them out because it was an, it's an easy thing to search for to just do control F4 in like Microsoft Word and you can kind of bounce around, you can find all of your different sections. And when you are using this feature in Scrivener, if you have done that in a Word document, you can just leave this in here and then you can import that Word document and it will separate your document into different sections based on this. But if you've used, let's say, for example, you've used a dollar sign, you can change it to a dollar sign. Or if you've used the ampersand, you can add that. So you can change it to whatever you have used so that it will separate stuff out. Or some people use ellipses and some people use asterisks. So whatever you have used, um, enter that in here and then import that document into Scrivener and it will separate everything out into separate sections based on where these marks are in that text. Okay, enough about importing. Export is just basically how to get stuff out of Scrivener and into other file formats. There's my doggy again, hello doggy. So if we're exporting into a file, we are, we're exporting uh, whatever you have selected over here into me, um, specific file folders. So let's just click on this real quick. Alrighty, so we, uh, in here, in we go. This is mostly like 
because this is not compiling. This is if you want to share or you want to create like um, a backup that's outside of the Scrivener format, or if you want to share stuff with somebody who is not using Scrivener, but like not the entire manuscript, if that makes sense. If you want to export your manuscript as one big file, you're going to use the compile feature. If you want to export it in smaller chunks, you're going to use this feature. And this is, again, a thing that is a little bit more in depth that I would cover in a different video all by itself. But for this video, just knowing that it's here and knowing that compiling is not the only way to get stuff out. So like, I'll select onto this scene. There's supposed to be text in here. Okay, there we go. So then file, export. Um, if you notice right here, it says one file selected for export. And right here it says subscene because that is what I selected, subscene. If I want to select multiples, I give it, I'm gonna hold down shift and then the down key, right? To select multiples and then file export files. And now it says five selected for export and it is now untitled because I have, I have multiple things selected and so I would have to name it myself. This is where I'm gonna save it to. And then if I want to include all of this stuff as well, I will click that. I am gonna export it as a default rich text, but then if I wanna change it to Microsoft Word, I can do that as well. Exporting as an OPML file. And OPML stands for something, something markup language. Um, I don't remember, something, it's markup, something markup language. I know that OPML is markup. <laughs> and this is like for, specific types of programs that want to know markup really good stuff, it, which is what Scrivener is. So Scrivener works on like an outline, everything that Scrivener reads and saves is text-based. So the markup is important when we're talking about things like the metadata. And if you have a, a different program other than Scrivener that also reads like markup type files, this is how you would want to export it rather than like regular files. Outliner contents as a CSV. So CSV is like spreadsheet type data. I think it stands for like comma separated values is what the CSV stands for. The outliner view right here, right? This is, if I exported this as a CSV, it would export this to basically be compatible with turning it into a, in like an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheets spreadsheet csvs are um I, I have a couple of websites that i use data on and csv is how i import that data from an excel spreadsheet i save it as a csv file and then i upload that into my website so that it just transfers over and have to type everything in by hand so if i wanted to move all of this stuff into a spreadsheet for some reason I would save it as a CSV. Exporting things to a CSV will only, this will only become active, like an active option, if the outliner, which is right here, is active in the, as a selection. So if I click here and it's like this instead, then the outliner, the CSV is not going to be an option. So you have to have it selected in here and then whatever is in here at the moment will get exported as a CSV. Comments and annotations. This only exports your comments and annotations that you have made from the project into a single file. And if you, so let's click on this and within here, I can choose to go with the selected documents only if I want, and then it will only pull whatever is out of this thing, or I can do the whole document. If you just leave it, it'll be the whole document. You can include the titles and then insert links back to the Scrivener section. So even after you've exported it, you can kind of pop back into your Scrivener and look at like, oh, where did this comment, where did this annotation come from? And you can find it that way. Last but not least, export as a Scrivener 2 project because I this program that I have is Scrivener 3. But if you, for some reason, want to go back to Scrivener 2, you can do that right here uh, because Scrivener 2 will not read Scrivener 3 files. It's just it, the two versions are, are different. And so Scrivener 2, like the files will be corrupted. It's kind of like if you tried to open like a Microsoft, like a, like a current Microsoft Word document, like a docx in an old, old, old version of Microsoft, like Microsoft 2000, I think it was it 2003 or, or whatever, 1997 or <laughs> one of those. Or maybe you are doing some 
co-writing or you, you're working with an editor who only uses Scrivener 2 and you want to be a cool kid, so you export into Scrivener 2 so that they can actually um, see what you're doing. Alrighty, next. So sync, syncing things. I have Scrivener on my desktop, which is what you see right now. I also have a Scrivener app on my iPad which came in really handy a couple weeks ago because the week before Christmas, my Mac's keyboard decided to take a big old poop. And I didn't have any external keyboards at the time, so I had to take it in for repairs. And since it was like Christmas and New Year's and holidays and all that stuff, it took like two weeks for me to get it back. So I had nothing for two weeks and I almost went totally bonkers. But fortunately I had my iPad that had the Scrivener app on it and I had two things backed up on there so I was able to do something. So that was kind of nice. So you can sync your desktop, laptop, your computer-based Scrivener with either iPad or iPhone. I don't know if they are supported on Android ooh, because I don't use Androids, but I do know that there are Scrivener apps for both the tablet and phone version of whatever device you've got. Right here is where you're gonna sync with your mobile devices. When you sync with mobile devices, what this is going to do is um, Scrivener is gonna check to make sure that this project that I'm in right now didn't get any changes done on mobile. So I can have Scrivener open on my computer and on my, my tablet. So if I have it open in my tablet and I'm farting around with it, and then I come onto my computer and I click this, the sync with mobile devices, Scrivener is going to check with the mobile version and make sure that, that it syncs up. So that is the case, then it's going to tell me that that's the case. Yes, changes were made. What do you wanna do? And um, there's a whole uh, procedure to that, but this is how you initiate it right here. So syncing with your mobile devices. Syncing with an external folder, if you have made like a, a backup folder on your desktop, or you can do it on your desktop, you can also do it in Dropbox, whatever your iCloud you're using, um, Google Drive, so any of the cloud-based things as well, or, or, or internet-based things. And so this is actually like if you're working with a co-author co or an editor and you have this project saved in like a Dropbox that you both have access to, then you've come in here and you've made all of your changes. And then you're going to sync up with that external folder, clickety clack, and then whatever changes you've made in here are going to be updated in that shared folder so that your co-writer or editor can see that and act on it. And this um, sync with external folder now just means that in, this is how you do that immediately. So this one will give you options like selections and stuff. Let's, let's see. This is how I choose the external folder it goes into. And I don't have this one set to sync with anything because if I lose this, it's not gonna break my heart. But my big projects, I do have, pro I have external folders. They save in a Dropbox. And so here's kind of how we select everything. And after you have this set up, you can come into here and then this will be, ooh, this will be an active link and you can click that and it'll just do it without you having to go through that whole selecting folders and doing stuff. That little window won't pop up. So backing up, backing up is so important, you guys please back up your work. There's nothing worse than, you know, I know I wrote this thing and I can't find it. Oh no, I didn't back it up, ah, like that's terrible. So <laughs> back up your work. And to do that, click back up to, so over here I've got a Dropbox that's hooked up to um, just a bunch of stuff because I'm a digital hoarder and I needed I needed space. In here you can see I've got my Scrivener backups, Scrivener projects. So these are my two that I have saved in here because I would die if either of these got deleted. Not literally, but I would feel like it. I'd lay on my floor for a while and just scream into the carpet <laughs> if I lost either of these. So I have them backed up in my Dropbox. I have them backed up on my desktop. I have them backed up in a few places because I would be really sad if these went away. I've worked on them for a very long time. This is where you'll set up your backups and you can back it up as a zip if it's a really big thing so that it's not taking up a ton of space or just a regular old Scrivener file. And if you want to, so templates are fun and cool. Like if you are opening up a new project, these are templates. So these are all of our fun templates. So I have already made a template. This is my template that I have made. And it's basically just the text that I like because Scrivener defaults to, I wanna say Palatino size 13 and I don't like that because I have ADHD and it makes me very rigid with the things I will accept in my life. And so it's Times New Roman size 12 or GTFO basically. So I have my novel template is um, all the text, all the default text is changed to Times New Roman. It's all changed to the indentation that I like. The first paragraph does not get indented. 
the headers are all a certain location and style and that kind of thing, blah, blah, blah. And the way that I made that was that I set up how I wanted things in whatever document I was using, and then I just went to File, Save as Template. So this will pop up. I can title it whatever I want to title it and then put it in a category. And this is just the category it shows up in that window to like make a new project. And then you can change whatever you want your... So right now, like the icon manuscript book is that little thing. And so let's change it to academic, which is the, little, the Parthenon shows up versus television, a little TV shows up. I can save the styles into the template. So if I've set up any fun styles in here, I can save that as well. And then I would hit OK and it would save this. And I don't want to save it because this is not a good template. It's kind of, kind of my trash document. <laughs> it's not a template I want. But this is uh, this is how you save templates if you want those. All right, um, page setup is you are going to get into for printing. So if I want to print things, this is where I'm going to come and set the page up. Um, we've all seen this dialogue before, right? And then print current document. It's going to bring up this thing. So we'll print out the whole document. And it's only what I have selected. So I've only got this one thing selected. If I want to print the whole thing, I'll come up here, select everything. And I'm going to choose this. and print so now it's way more pages you can see and these will go down here too so this means you can print your whole thing without having to like compile it or export it first i chose this view the scrivening's view for printing this and if i click in here and then print it let's see what happens it will kind of smush everything together. So before I had 64 pages, now I only have three <laughs> because a lot of these are just, it's like a single line or it's only the title or something. And so this kind of um, puts it into more like a more of an outline format than a complete, a whole big thing. So if you wanna print out your outline, this is how you'll do that. And it is only, looks like it's only printing out this line right here. Down at the very bottom, Compile, oh, the compile menu, which is covered in a completely different video. And also this video is really long and I'm gonna stop. So there we go. Compile is covered in a different video, but we will click on this anyway, just to show you kind of what compile looks like. Hey, compile. Yeah, I will I will be going over compile a lot more in other videos because compile is a big old beast and there is so much that goes into it. And it can be really frustrating when you wanna compile it in a certain way and it just won't do what you want. So we will be going over compile in a lot more detail later on but i mean that's it um thank you for tuning into this really long video and i hope you learned something new if you like this video please like share comment and subscribe wash your hands black lives matter and have a nice day